All right, so good afternoon, and for everybody, thanks for stopping by. Uh, we don't have a lot of time to, you know, for, for this particular uh, talk, but hope what I'm able to present to you is of some benefit for the, all of you guys that are new or getting your feet wet in OpenStack or those who are just recently started. Um, let me get it, uh, just um, hands up uh, how many of you guys are completely new to OpenStack who are just, okay, awesome. I'm gonna take that the rest of the other guys are already well delved into the magic that makes OpenStack what it is. And just to let you guys know, it is gonna be a very uh, beginner-centric type of presentation. So what I'm gonna be showing here isn't necessarily gonna be groundbreaking, but at least it will provide you with some of uh, information as to how to get to explore your OpenStack infrastructure using the Python OpenStack client. Uh, to give you a little bit uh, of an idea about myself, I'm a support engineer at Rackspace Private Cloud. Um, we you know, support a large number of OpenStack customers uh, of all various sizes, not only from the OpenStack consumption model, but as well as to managing their infrastructure from them as well. I've been doing this for about roughly two years and over, cumulatively over the period of 10 years, I have an experience in Linux network and of course virtualization technologies. Uh, OpenStack, however, has been one of those that, one of those um, technology or, or technology fields where I feel like every single aspect that I've learned over a period of time I've been constantly put to test. Uh, now, you don't necessarily have to have a lot of experience in working with OpenStack directly. Obviously, I have strong knowledge of the Linux operating system, as well as some solid networking background or some networking concepts is useful, uh, and as well as some strong familiarity with command line uh, inter interface clients. Uh, however, you know, it, it can be a little bit intimidating once you start looking into the moving parts, uh, especially when you're a new guy learning about every single project that's out there. But uh, again, in contrary to what the presentation title states, uh, you can take a deep breath as I hope that your manager is not gonna land you into a full OpenStack deployment single-handedly or just by yourself without any experience. Uh, one assumption as well is that if your organization itself follows a multi-cloud strategy, chances is that you're using OpenStack, have heard about it, or, or are currently in the process of implementing it. On the other hand, if you're attending here and your company sent you here, likely is that you're using it uh, or, or will be using it in the future. Now, as you guys heard on the keynote this morning, right, there's a 44, what's it, two-thirds of the, uh, two-thirds of the implementations of OpenStack are being used in production. And the user data that I gathered uh, before I heard that this morning is between 2015 and 2016, based on the user surveys, there was approximately a 16% increase in production workloads. So chances are that with the growth of these production workloads, so is the need to manage uh, this, you know, or have people capable of managing this type of environments. Now, there is a point to consider when dealing with OpenStack as an infrastructure as well as an infrastructure as well as an OpenStack uh, consumer. Um, as a OpenStack infrastructure manager, you know, you'll be involved constantly with the users of the cloud itself. A lot of the times you have to deal with um, silent failures, meaning everything shows up, monitoring system shows up, you look like all your systems are working, but a specific user project or tenant are reporting an issue and after you dig into it a little bit deeper, you do notice that there is an issue. Uh, another, uh, another challenge uh, within managing an OpenStack infrastructure itself is that while the goal itself is to move the infrastructure as a service platform one layer up, meaning you are abstracting um, the, you know, yourself from the users and the user are be able to consume the infrastructure directly. Um, there's, um, my apologies. Yeah, there's, there's users who are new to the platform or starting to get familiar, they have to rely on your expertise. So you have to be very well prepared into learn, you know, learn, you're not familiar with the answer or fish answer together. My, my apologies. In addition to having to familiarize yourself with these complex environments with a vast number of software components, which are mostly inter interdependent of each other, um, it's a bit simplified when you're equipped uh, with the route, right tools. Now, before talking, taking a look at the unified OpenStack client, uh, one smart note to consider is that there is a number of OpenStack projects. Um, there, I put 46 on the slide, there's actually a whole lot more than that. Uh, each specific project does have its set, own set of uh, software development kits, uh, language specific bindings, as well as clients. Um, the OpenStack client itself, um, at one point, it, the, 
what it solves is the need for you to having to install multiple command line client tools and it's unifying all of the core projects into the same, um, into the same tool. Now let me go ahead and show you the, uh, this in action, and this again, it's not a comprehensive walkthrough as to how to install the client, it's just mostly as to showing you top five commands that you can use to identify your infrastructure. So, if you excuse me here. Sorry, I don't have my screen smeared. All right, so the first uh, thing that we have to make sure is understanding the what services are enabled in your cloud, right? So in this particular case, and this uh, lab environment that I have confi configured, this uh, consists of networking, the image service, the identity, and the compute service. Uh, the placement service, at this point, we're not gonna worry about it because it's a new feature that's been implemented starting in uh, Okada. But in this particular case, we're testing that the keystone or the authentication service is working. Uh, in order for you to enable this endpoint, or this endpoints that you can see here, the services have to be defined. Uh, without this endpoints being defined and without those endpoints being bound to a service, you will not be able to interact. So you can say that before you can have anything running in your infrastructure, you need to have the Keystone service fully running and implemented. Uh, the next uh, example that we're going to show you here is the uh, service list that is running by Nova. Uh, Nova or, or the or compute service. As you can see in one column, you have the number of the program or the binary that provides services, the host where it's running, as well as the status and the state. Now what that tells us there is uh, the Nova Compute, which provides instant services to, it's running on two different hosts, and then the uh, Nova um, control plane services, such as the Nova scheduler, console, as well as the conductor, are all running on different number of hosts. This particular environment, I deployed it using OpenStack Ansible, which does utilize containers to containerize a lot of the compute plane services, so that's exactly, essentially what it uh, shows here. Uh, another caveat to understand is that not all of the services do support, uh, not all of the projects, uh, either through using its native command line interface tools, where it's using the Python unified client, will support statuses like this. Uh, to give an example, the Glance service um, itself, um, there's no way for you to say, hey, Glance, show me what the status is of your service. In this particular case, of course, you know, it's returning a number of the instances that, or images that the service is providing. However, it doesn't give you any status. Uh, if you want to familiarize yourself more, um, my suggestion is, again, when starting, just look at the endpoints. And all of, this em all of the different endpoints uh, that are there are likely going to be load balanced. So there's going to have multiple members behind it. So if, again, this is taken into consideration that you have absolutely zero knowledge of the infrastructure. You're pretty much sort of like reverse engineering your way into like, hey, I want to see what my infrastructure ha looks like without zero documentation. Uh, another example that I have here is the uh, networking service. So if for this in particular scenario, uh, we have a Linux bridge based uh, environment with a number of agents that are running for Neutron. And of course, very similar to the command output that we saw for the compute service list, uh, you're going to have the agent type, the host where it's running, as well as uh, its, its state and where it's at. And of course, uh, there's a whole lot other, again, this just went meant to showcase the environment as it was set up in the lab. Uh, there is, I can get in a lot of other services or many other services that are not yet supported by the OpenStack client, but you can say that the core projects are supported, including Cinder, um, Orchestration Heat, as well as, all, you know, as well as a variety of other uh, projects. Um, let's see, that's pretty much all we have for now. Um, you know, uh, yeah, open for any questions or, or anything. Again, this was just a very brief walkthrough as to what you can do with the OpenStack client itself. Oh. All right, then that's it. Thank you, guys. Thank you.